shop. It's actually at the home place where I grew up and all of our my brothers. So we just work out of this tobacco barn here that's been here since the 1900s. Pretty basic and pretty humble, but it does the job, really. Um, we're still on the gravel floor, dirt floor basis, but uh, you can still run a profitable business out of that. Absolutely. So this is where we show up in the morning every morning. And uh, we have Wednesday morning meetings once a week. And we got this little room here that we just closed off. Um, that we can all sit in in the winter, throw a heater in there and get everybody on the same page. And we got storage up top for our drainage and irrigation parts. The dream is eventually with this to get it insulated, get metal on the outside and concrete floor, but it works for now. Welcome back to another episode of the uh, Cost of Doing Business podcast. Today we are in Ohio, close to Dayton, and I am in here at Cable Brothers Outdoors headquarters office with Jeremy Cable. Uh, we spent the afternoon uh, going out and visiting a job site, checking out Jay Square's job site where he's putting in a pool, so had a good day. Grabbed a good lunch, uh, sit down here and record another session talking about business and uh, get to share Jeremy's story. Tell me who Cable Brothers Outdoor Services is and mm -hmm. uh, how you got to be in business today. So we've been doing it for about 10 years. Um, I started back in 2012. I was kind of this shy farm boy, growing up on the farm, raising chickens, doing working in the garden. Hated talking to people. <laughs> I was not a people person. I And here you are talking and, to people. Right, exactly. <laughs> and uh, my parents actually were the ones that kind of pushed me into this. So I can kind of blame them on whatever, <laughs> yeah. you know, whatever things go. But I uh, had a friend of mine that had, had bought a little mowing business in, from a, a firefighter that was doing it part-time. Okay. And he just ran out of time. So my friend bought it thinking he was going to start this mowing business. And then he just didn't have time. And he's like, hey, do you want this thing? And at that point, I was like, I do not want to deal with customers. I, I just, I'm not a people person. I don't like talking to people. I was probably 15, going on 16 at that time, and my parents said, nah, I, yeah, I think you should think about it. And so I did, and I, I ended up making the leap. Yeah. You know, they kind of pushed me over, and I decided, you know what, I, I do, I love mowing, love just anything outside. So that's what I did. So I started out at 16, pulling a little, like, four foot by eight foot trailer with a little Dixon zero turn and stuff thrown in the back of, I actually used my friend's SUV to pull it around a little bit. <laughs> and like I was doing maybe 20, I don't know, I want to say 15, 20, 30 yards a week. And we drive 45 minutes away and do a couple of them. And yeah. then come, anyway, it was, so we were just driving around mowing these little yards for 15, 20, bucks a yard yeah. thinking you know if we hit 30 bucks a yard man we were really doing good and, <laughs> and so we kind of kind of went for that was in 2012 when i started that and uh just kind of enjoyed doing it yeah i you know being 16 i was working a full-time well not a full-time job at that point but working at a produce farm and helping my grandparents grain farming operations some my dad did irrigation so i was already kind of in the green industry with that so i knew irrigation really well you know, at that point, it was almost more of a hobby. Yeah. Um, and so started out there, and then over the next few years, uh, between 2012 and 2018, I believe, we just kind of slowly grew a little bit at a time. Um, two of my brothers, two of my younger brothers, um, so I'm uh, actually the oldest of 11. I got 10 wow. siblings. So there's eight of us boys and three sisters. Wow. So there's actually five of us brothers before we had any sisters. So we were just a household of guys wow. for a while. You know, I had plenty of help Yeah. with that. And so... Well, there's four of you in the business now, isn't there? Right. Yeah. yeah. There was five. Yeah. Um, one of them moved on to some other adventures. But anyway, so a couple of my brothers, they kind of took over the mowing then because I started working full time for another landscaping company in the area. Um, just wanted more experience. And I would work Fridays and Saturdays. Okay. Um, helping with the mowing. And we would do odds and ends, trimming bushes, mulching, all the normal. Sure. Just cleanups and things. And so that kind of went on 
for, well, like I said, until about 2018. Um, and in that time period, I worked for two different landscaping companies, um, about three years each. Uh, the one that was just strictly work on their mow crew. The other one I got into more high-end property maintenance. And that's where I kind of really learned uh, more of a love for plants. And okay. Culture. I got a lot of training with that. Um, and a lot more knowledge of how to how to work with uh, plant material yeah. and horticultural stuff. And yeah. so that was a, a real kicker for me and, and kind of learned hardscapes along that line too. They had some really good foreman work in there that we put in some pretty interesting situations as far as projects go. And uh, so I just learned a lot there. 2018, I got married and that kind of kicked things into high gear. Kind of got to start providing for a family. Yeah. It's not a hobby anymore. Nope, not a hobby anymore. So you're the oldest of yes. your five brothers. And so you were kind of the one that your parents kind of got you into this. And are yep. you are you still kind of the one that's leading the charge? Basically. Yeah. I would say at that point, I was just kind of the one spearheading anything and everything. Yeah. You know, it's like, where are we going so to go? So what does Cable Brothers look like today? So what it looks like today is there's three of us that are equal owners. Okay. Equal partners in yep. the company. There was four. Um, and he decided he wanted to, to break out of that and kind of give him some opportunity mm -hmm. to go to some other adventures. So there's three of us equal shares. Another one of my brothers works with us as an employee and we have a couple other fellows. How many total with now? Us. Total, with everybody? total, we're anywhere from uh, six guys in the field with myself and a part-time help in the office. Um, this spring we had upwards of, of eight guys in the field okay so generally run about three crews of two each sure we're gonna mow crew they take care of the weekly lawn care that keeps them busy about four four plus days a week yeah um and then a landscape care and enhancement crew that uh, this property cleanups planting so how like things. with the with the maintenance and the installs like yes. what would you is it 50 50 in a revenue standpoint is it 50 50 or is it uh what, what's the split I would say it's been about that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's been about that. And that's with one crew on the install side. Right. And, and one about, crew on the install and one crew on the mowing? Or, or two on the so mowing? So the two crews on our maintenance side, one crew on the mowing, oh. one crew on landscape maintenance. Those gotcha. two crews combined equal about one install about crew. the same as one install crew. What about like your profit? Like, do, like where is your profit coming from? Install hands down. Okay. Yeah. Is sure. Is bringing in a more profit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, and that's what I meant, just to clarify. Like, yeah. Like, is yeah, okay. So two crews on maintenance, one on install. Mm -hmm. They're about fifty fifty in revenue, though. Right. And is it also like a fifty fifty profit split, or like you just said, hands down? The, I would say hands down, the install yeah. crew brings in more profit. Granted, we have our projects, yeah. our install projects that go way over budget. Um, that we lose money on, but then a lot of our... That's the growing journey. Yep, it's the growing journey. We just take those and learn. Yeah. Stepping stones. To, yeah. To, you know, how... The important part is that you know when it happens. Uh, exactly. You know. And that's where it's synced up. And originally, Element, we can kind of go over that too. Yeah. Um, but that's where synced up comes in at for us. I mean, I can look at a job that we're on right now. Right. That you and I just went and looked at this afternoon and know, hey, this is where we're at, both on our, our man hours for the job and just our profitability. Right. And I can just keep tabs on that. Yeah. What would you say is your bread and butter? Kind of like, this is the perfect job. We're good at it. We can do an excellent job. Like, it, we, we, we know what we're doing. We're estimating it. And it's like, we can be profitable. It's predictable. Like, mm -hmm. what would you say is your bread and butter type project? Two to four day jobs um, in the install projects and enhancement projects. So that would be like, for us, that'd be like a complete tear out and re-landscape of a property. So a new landscape design, freshen up the property. Um, or, and then the other thing we do really well at is our irrigation installations and drainage. So that's mm -hmm. something we've kind of dialed in. We know how to do it. We know what's going into it. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a whole lot custom mm -hmm. with an irrigation. I mean, every, every system is different, but we know what needs to be done. So is um, hardscapes, is that kind of, a, is that a newer venture for you? More so. Hardscapes, we've been doing hardscape projects for about three seasons now. Okay. Yeah. So relatively new. What's been your biggest sure. one so far? The one that we're on right now is okay. pretty close to that. So With that I would say in that, that yeah, yeah, about twenty to twenty-five thousand dollar hardscape project has been kind of. We did a couple last year that were twenty to twenty-five, twenty to twenty-five thousand. Sure. 
Um, so that's kind of our biggest project so far. Yeah. Um, we've done some larger installation projects, like a full property. Like landscape. New landscape. Sure. Yeah, uh, new lawn that are, you know, pushing 30, 40,000. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, we're kind of just learning on those. As sure. Well. Talk to me about your vision for the company, like for Keeble Brothers, uh, it, like let's say, where do you want to be in three years from now? That's the fun part about being in a partnership. <laughs> there's, there's uh, you know, you'll, have, you'll get all kinds of different opinions on partnerships, whether they're good or bad or what's the present. Well, tell kind. me what your two brothers would say, then tell me what you right. would say. Right. Oh, boy. I don't even know if I know what they would say, <laughs> um, which sounds is probably like, bad. Sounds like a company that, breakfast that, is, a company is in order. <laughs> yeah, that, that's something we need to talk about. Um, uh, you know, honestly, we probably agree on, on a lot of it as far as where we would go. Sure. Um, we spend... A, as much time as we can talking about what's working, what's not working. Yeah. And, and what we're going to do about it. You know, like you and I had talked before here, you know, we're looking at water features and kind of uh, getting more into that game. Um, you are going to Pondemonium on Monday, right? <laughs> we'll see. We'll it's, see. It's Thursday you before Pondemonium, <laughs> and I'm telling you, it has to go to Pondemonium. Right. Yeah, I want to. Yeah. I want to. So, I, you know, as far as my vision for it and and ultimately it needs to be us three working together on it i'm one of those fellows that comes up with an idea and and runs after it and then 12 months down the road i see another squirrel mm -hmm. and run after it so that's that's kind of my downfall and that's one thing that's nice about being in a partnership is they can come along and say hey Balance, wait a yeah. sec what in the world are you doing yeah you know um so that's been a good thing on that um, the, the downfall of, a, of an, a, a partnership is you can't move as quickly. Yeah. You know, you know, I can't just say, hey, next year, you know what, we're just going to go full stream this way. If they're not on board with it, um, we got to talk about it. And that actually can be, a, it can be a pro, too. It can be a good thing. Yeah. Um, so that I'm not just making all these stupid decisions on my own mm -hmm. based on what's intriguing to me. At this point, we don't do everything. There's a lot of things we don't do. We don't do lawn treatments kind of stay away from some of that um but we've got a lot of requests for you know it seems like a lot of folks want kind of a one-stop shop when it comes to a company to take care of their property i see so we've we've tried to be that somewhat um and i think we're at the point now where we have to decide as a company whether we're going to go that route and try to become a one-stop shop when it, whether it's you know, we're going to install your project and then we're going to maintain your property for the next 10 years yeah. and, and provide everything that you need um, because there is a need for that. Or you know, maybe that's not our niche and we focus, you know, more on building unique uh, outdoor living spaces um, with everything, the water features, the space that you're on, the patio space, the yeah. plantings. Um, and maybe we'll have a maintenance program to go with that, that we maintain those projects. Right. Um, I'm kind of either direction. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure where, where we'll go on that. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for giving us that rundown. Like, yeah. uh, what about, um, in your journey as you grew the business? Mm -hmm. Um, I know we were talking some numbers, like you've grew, you've grown pretty rapidly over the last four mm -hmm. years. Like when it switched from a hobby to a, okay, we got to make yeah. a living at this, right? So um, what was one of the, think back to a challenge or a particular difficulty that you encountered that you ever, like how did you, like what was it and how did you handle it? How did you overcome it? One of our most difficult years, and this is kind of jumping back to, to where, you know, I got married in 2018 and then 2019 is when I jumped full time. Okay. So you were part time before that. I was still, well, I was working full time for another landscaping company. Okay. Yeah, sure. And mm -hmm. then working this thing on the side. So in 2018, I think we did just under 100,000 okay. in sales. And that was with two of my brothers working full time in the field, mostly mowing yards. And then Friday and Saturday, you know, we'd go out and do some landscape work. Okay. 2019, uh, well, actually, I'd, I'll add to that, I was actually working four days a week at my full time job in 2018. So I had Fridays and Saturdays, Thursday, yeah, Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, anyway, 2019, I decided, okay, this is the year to go full-time. I, I can't keep up with my full-time job. I really want to make this thing go. So I did. Well, I was super ambitious to sell jobs and get things on the schedule. 
and I just racked up my schedule with, with drainage and spring cleanups and mulching and, and all these jobs. And I got to spring in 2019, and it's like, I don't know how I'm going to get all this done. <laughs> like, I've got myself in a pickle here. Um, it, thankfully, it worked out that two of my other brothers that were also working for another um, company in the area, they decided they want to move on, and they said, hey, do you, do you think you have enough work for all of us? And I said, well, yeah, absolutely. Like, come on, let's go. So that kind of started off the whole adventure of Cable Brothers, really. Um, kind of how we worked that out was one of my brothers was already a part owner with me. We kind of worked it to where, hey, you bring a trailer into the business that's worth this much. Like, I'll, I'll count that as a buy-in for mm-hmm. the company. Mm-hmm. And so we kind of did it that way, and that's how we ended up with, like, a big partnership that okay. we started off with. And uh, we've kind of had to iron out the details since then, yeah. how that all pans out. But anyway, we were still young and trying to figure that out. So 2019 was probably one of the toughest years. Okay. Um, being full time, two of us, two of us were married, um, and we didn't know how to price our jobs, how long some of the stuff would take us. We kind of knew what you know how to build the project, whether it was drainage or you know we knew how to do the work, for the most part. We're we're always learning, but I had no idea how to figure man hours. I had no idea how to price it. And we walked away from 2019 uh, at three and a quarter, 330,000 in annual revenue with a loss of around, I think around 10%. Really? We lost around 30,000 wow. or so that year. Was that after you had paid yourselves? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So that's one thing we did, you know, right out the gate was try to, well, at least when we went full time was we got to pay ourselves. Yeah. You know, especially if we're married, we've got a family, um, we can't, you know, can't just draw a salary whenever yeah. we want to. Yeah. So we did do that. Um, but yeah, after we were paid, after everything was else was paid, we had debt just piling up. And so, um, you know, that kind of started our journey into, we got to figure this thing out. Mm-hmm. And so we started into, which that, so kind of to answer your question, um, what was one of the things that we had to overcome? Well, we just had to figure out what our costs were and what we had to actually charge. And there are lots of other challenges too, but sure, that was yeah. one of them. And so 2020 then, or the winter of 19 and 20 is when we came across Element. Sure. Um, I think we we're at GIE and everybody was talking about Element. I was like, what's this? Mm-hmm. You know, they're talking about, if you're going to budget and figure out what how to price things, you've got to have Element. Yeah. So we looked into it and that was a complete game changer. Yeah. Um, we plugged in our numbers. How much money are we going to spend on this, on that? And the the relief of knowing this is what I need to charge. This is, you know, this is our actual cost. Um, was just totally, 2020 was, was just so different. In 2020, I think we hit around um, 550000 in sales, so about a, you know, two hundred and twenty five thousand dollar jump yep. from twenty nineteen. And we didn't have a, a big profit margin on that year, but we were in the green. And had you paid down your debt from the previous year? We were working on it. Okay. Yep. I think I don't remember how much we had paid down, but we yeah. What we had done in twenty so after you nineteen were, after you were all done was like a single digit kind of profit margin at the end of twenty twenty. I think so. Yeah. I think we walked away from twenty twenty with yeah, like maybe a three figure yeah. profit margin, yeah, a few thousand dollars, yeah. Um, but it's like, hey, we at least we're headed the right direction. Yeah, at least we're getting. The and same you're and out. you're exactly right. Like, um, Allman has has been a game changer for oh, yeah. a lot of companies all across North America. Like that budget, like just the just the like you fear what you don't know yeah exactly you know? and and it's almost like once you when you realize you don't know something you're afraid to look yeah you know? yeah and so you're just like put blinders on and keep on yeah. going and then finally it gets so bad that you sit down like you did element yeah. budget you figure it out yep. and then just like you have that sense of relief like finally you know yeah. and, and finally and what happens is what i see a lot is when you're in that position of not knowing you let customers beat you down. They, yep. they negotiate with you. You end up selling a job for like it's impossible to make any money on it. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. um, and 
and you don't know, uh, you can total up your cost of your materials and you can guess it's gonna take you three days. Mm -hmm. But what you don't know is how much do I need to mark all, all of this up to also cover like my trucks, my tires, my insurance, oh, yeah. my, you know, it's like you're, you're totally winging it. Yeah. You know, that, that, this is the story of 90% of small business owners out there. You know what yep. I mean? And yeah. so um, I can, I can uh, empathize with that whole like, I mean, it's an emotional journey. It's a fact-finding oh, journey. It's, it's, yeah. it's a draining and stressful journey. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, the fact that you just sat down, took people's advice, and built a budget which you can do in a spreadsheet, you can do now and then, you can right. do it synced up, it doesn't really matter. The point is build a budget, yeah. you know? Oh, 100%. And uh, then, then once you know the truth, now you're, you're actually set up to make good decisions, mm -hmm. to not let the customer beat you down, yep. and uh, switch from being in the red to the yeah. green. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. You know, you figured that out fairly quickly. Like, there's people I, there's people out there that have been in business five, ten, all their five, you know, all their life, oh, I, and yeah, I are imagine. still where you were. What is it now? Three years ago, right. you know. Yeah. So, yeah. I'd say you've done better than most. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. It was not easy. I mean, when you walk away from a year's worth of work and have nothing to work, show for it, or have thirty thousand dollars of debt. It's like yeah, it's like unbelievable, and it's not just hey, I bought this piece of equipment and it added thirty thousand dollars of equipment. We're talking credit card debt. Yeah, like twenty some thousand dollars, thirty. I think we were at thirty thousand dollars in credit card debt, and for the next couple of years, which to the record, we've paid that credit card off. Um, we have a, a little bit. We had rolled it over to another credit card, but we we've paid off at least two thirds of it, mm -hmm. I think, and so. Um, that's been a long journey, but it was costing us. We had figured an interest. That thing was costing us around four, over four thousand dollars a year. Just an interest. Just an interest. Yeah. Um, let alone the money that had to go out in cash flow to pay that thing off. So in that, did you ever try to get a line of credit to like so you could? We were like, too young. They wouldn't give we it to you. We didn't have enough. Um, well, and if your P and L doesn't look good, they're not. And you're get, young. Yeah. We didn't have a lot of credit score. You know, it's like. So I was really the only three or four, you know, four of us brothers. I'm the oldest, and let's say if I'm 25 and it goes down from there, we didn't have enough credit score, so they yeah. wouldn't lend it to us. And so we just kind of got to the point where it's like our only point forward is put our heads down and just work, but work smart mm -hmm. and and figure out our numbers. So I asserted some things like things that change after you build a budget, but talk a little bit about like what what's different today. Um, or what was different in 2020 or whatever after you built that budget? Like what, mm -hmm. what did it do for you or your team or like how you approached business? The, the struggle went from, I, I don't even know if we're making any money at this and we have no money to buy what we need to buy. The struggle went from that to figuring out how long is this going to take us. Um, but the point was is now we knew what to, what to charge. Um, and so as an estimator, my confidence level completely changed. Yeah. You know, I could put a number to it and know that this is where, you know, it, if we can do it in this time frame, this is where we'll hit. Yeah. Um, and so it really, the stress level changed a lot. And then even just from last year to this year, you know, we've, we've been using synced up for a over a year now. Yeah. yeah. It's at we, least that. We, uh, jumped on board before you guys went. Was it Before 2020? We it. Was it 2020? That would have been that have been late summer 2020 then, or fall 2020, yeah. or something like just that. Just to say, we were only on LMN for about a year. Yeah. Um, and we we're just looking for something that was more streamlined to to send proposals with. And the job costing thing wasn't even necessarily on my radar. Okay. At that point, uh, it was more the the clunkiness of not being able to send electronic proposals and just the apps and stuff that I was synced up with seemed like it was more all in house. Uh -huh. And then the job costing portion was like, what? Yeah. Really? Like, who, <laughs> I, I, why hasn't somebody thought of this? <laughs> and so, you know, one of the things that's most rewarding to me to hear is just from last year to this year, um, you know, with the help of synced up and element in the background and us just learning projects, you know, my install form is coming to me and saying, hey, my life's a lot less stressful now. Wow. Because I know I got time to get the jobs done. That's and amazing. And that's just because, 
you know, part of it is we've we've done you know maybe that type of project before, and now we can go back and sync up and and see well, how long did that take us to do, you know, X type of project, um, and uh, you know where did we end up in profit on the job? But it's like then we can translate that forward, yeah. and now it's paying off with not just being able to make better profit at the end of the day. Like that's nice, but ultimately um, we're trying to to make life better for our team as well mm -hmm. and give them a, a step up and step forward and for them to say hey things are so much less stressful this year i it think is worth that is something that um probably gets overlooked or not even maybe fully considered a lot when people talk about knowing your numbers being profitable getting a budget is like it's not just about the dollars and cents like it's also the morale of your team oh yeah because, and, and that plays into retention, hiring people, like, because yep. basically hiring someone is like convincing them to join forces with you, yeah. right? You know? Yeah. And then convincing them to stay. Like, this yep. is a viable place. I can make a living here, or make yeah. a career here, ultimately. I mean, who wants to work for a company that you can ask them, like, are we making any money at this? Well, no, not really. I yeah. Mean, that doesn't, that's not I, confidence inspiring. I want to raise my family. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to be able to move somewhere. I want to learn. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's huge. And, like, it's a, as an employee, like I was an employee for 15 years at Tesla Landscaping, and as an employee, it's impossible to have hope for the future and faith that I can build a career here if the company is barely breaking even or right. single digit profits are not making money. And, exactly. You know, you don't have the tools you need, and there's no investment into anything, and yep. your pay is barely eking up, if, if any. Yeah. You know, that's, that's just sending that message of like, eventually, when a better opportunity comes along, I'm gonna take it. Yeah, exactly. You know? Oh yeah, exactly. So yeah, wow, that's uh, that's quite a that's quite a uh, real journey there that I I know a lot of people are living. Yep. And the thing with job costing, like being able to like look back on a job, like you were saying, how mm -hmm. many hours did I have? Like I, that is exactly what job costing should do. Meaning yeah. like it's not just so you can geek out over the the numbers, right? No. Yeah. It's it's like oh yeah, I got thirteen point four seven percent profit. You know, yeah. it's not that. It's more like in plain English, it's like, where did I go wrong? Yep. Where did I go right? What do I need to do different the next time to not repeat the same mistake if I made a mistake? Yep. You know, so, because like, without job costing, it's like you're driving at night without lights on because you could be making an estimating mistake again and again yeah. and again and again and never knowing it. Mm -hmm. Your P&L is struggling, you're barely making any money, but you don't know where to go yep. or what to change or what to tweak. Exactly. And with job costing, it's like, well, it's in black and white in front of you. Like, yeah. this is, we did good at this, we did poorly at this, and yeah. now you know what to change. Yeah. And with, uh, with like those progress bars, like it's in the app with SMA yeah. versus actual hours and stuff, like what I find is it, it, it um, like so there, there are companies that do job costing manually, like in a spreadsheet or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's a hard, it, you, it, you can do it, no problem. Yeah. But it's, it's hard because it can take a week, three weeks, six weeks, if ever, that you that you finally sit down and plug the numbers in and figure out what you made on that job. By that time, you're on to your fifth job since then, and it's like the the connection, the cause and effect connection in your mind isn't there, yeah. right? But if it's like fresh live right there on your phone, as you're out there in the field before the job's even done, like you're immediately connecting, like, man, we're running over hours in this job. Why? And you and and, it's, and even your team yeah. is thinking about this, oh, and yeah. and it it triggers the conversation internally to be like. Um, what was it? Was there a difficult client? Was there poor weather? Was there was the access a bigger factor than we, we did? We underestimate how difficult the access was going to mm -hmm. be. Uh, material availability. I mean, you name it. But at, what happens is, or was it just a plain estimating mistake? Yeah. Or was it a perf crew performance problem? Yeah. You know. But what happens is, is it's triggering those conversations internally, not necessarily in a blame game, but just like, hey, what can we learn from this? And the estimator is now better equipped with better information because they now see what happened in the real world. Mm -hmm. The team is better equipped with information. They kind of have the confidence of knowing, hey, now the estimator knows the next job like this, we're not going to get hammered like we did on this one or right. whatever it is. Yep. And it just feeds that whole energy and morale of like, we work smart, we, we watch what we're doing, and we course correct, and uh, the company grows and the team yeah. grows. Yeah. You yeah. Know. Well, and I think a lot of that too by you being able to do that right away with your team gives them the advantage of, of, hey, we're going to do something about this. Yeah. Like on the next, maybe the next job or the next, you know, maybe three jobs away, you know, I know you've already corrected what we dealt with. Yeah. 
Exactly. Versus, you know, you know, if they kind of know, hey, it took us way longer to do this job than what it, what we were given. We know we're probably lost money on. We don't know how much, and we don't know why. You know, like yeah, like that. That's got to be super discouraging. Yeah, it's kind of like, then it's like hopeless. Are, are we even going to fix it? I mean, and so if you can sit down and have that conversation, okay, where did what did we do wrong? What can we learn from? It gives everybody something to to feel. It's it's hands on. It's like a buy in. Changes. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It yeah. gives everybody buy in to, hey, you know what? This went wrong. What are we going to do to change it? Yeah. No, those are great lessons, and you're kind of right in the middle of it right now, you know, yeah. with the transition of coming out of that hole of yep. not knowing your numbers, what, like two short years ago or three short years ago yeah, or whatever. Yeah, exactly. It, for me, with building synced up at Tusky Landscaping, and then now watching other people use it, like, that is what gives it, that's what lights me up is, is, is watching people kind of get this renewed sense of hope in their business or mm-hmm. like their, their, their families are, they're, they're, they're more available for their family. Just better lives, better quality lives. Yeah. Not only for, you know, not only the numbers, but at the business, but the team and the morale and the quality of life is all going up too. And uh, mm-hmm. that's the power of, as a, as a landscaper with your hands in the dirt that loves to run a machine, and spreadsheet what and numbers what and yeah. my accountant takes care of that that's yeah. the power of breaking through that stereotype yeah. sitting down and uh finally knowing and getting that sense of relief oh yeah yeah <laughs> and there's nothing better than I, I walked into an accountant for the first time this is another mistake you don't make you okay start a business without an accountant okay <laughs> um i did that for a number of years and that's another part of the story i hardly ever tell but uh, by the time we got to I want to say it was the end of 2019. I don't remember now when it was, but we, I walked into an accountant owing months of sales tax. Wow. Payroll tax that I had no idea how to file. We had been kind of running payroll through QuickBooks. I'd kind of figured out how to do that, but I was doing it all by myself. I wasn't paying taxes. I wasn't paying sales tax. I didn't know how to do it. I wasn't keeping up with it. And then, frankly, we just didn't have the money. And yeah. so I just kind of let everything slide. Well, well I'll catch that. You know, Surely it'll be fine. And then I was headed down that same route, you know, Caleb Allman talks about that he went down. Yeah. Of like, IRS is going to come after you. And I think one of the biggest things was just swallowing my pride and walking into an accountant's office and like, here's a mess. I need your help. And I should have done it sooner, but I'm glad I did it when I did. Because they helped us sort it through and okay, you've got to nail this. We've got to get these taxes paid off. How are we going to do this? And having somebody hold you accountable like that mm-hmm. and also help you you know, know where to go next mm-hmm. um, was just crucial. Uh, and it just took a lot of just swallowing my pride and walking in and saying, hey, I've made a big mess. Yeah. Um, wow. And then fast forward to this spring, hearing my accountant say, hey, you guys had a really good year last year. Like, this is amazing. And when did you get synced up? I'm just gonna, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, congratulations, so, but that's, man. Yeah. You know, it's so encouraging to hear an accountant that all they see is the back end, all they see is the numbers. And, and, and they're... To and hear they're, them say, yeah. like, great, great job. Yeah, that's and, you fantastic. Know, you came from way behind on taxes, no profit. It just... Yeah. And see, that's... You know, you can't... You can't factor something into your estimates that you don't know you need to pay or how much you need right. to pay. Like exactly. so in your store there wherever you're like, hey, I know I need to pay that. I have no idea how much you're like, yeah. you know, how, that, but you're bidding a job. So, right. you know, you can't bid a job correctly until you just get all the truth, mm-hmm. get all the numbers, get it in, the, you know. So, you know, that's, that's a, uh, it's a vicious cycle if you're in that Mm-hmm. Until you do what you did and took a massive action and said, yep. okay, I'm changing something and walking in and getting some help. Yep. And I think part of our next step, you know, something I've been thinking about for our next step with the company is going to be dealing with more uh, personal, kind of back to the question you asked of what's our vision for the next three to five sure. years. Um, a lot of that comes down to personal. You know, what kind of head trash am I dealing with? Uh-huh. Do I really think that we could even build something worthwhile? Um, and, and that's something that I've, wrestled with and you know if you can work through that personally and um how do i say it almost uh take myself out of the equation yeah you know my ego my identity doesn't need to be wrapped up in this thing um i'm here to serve my team 
and together we can serve our clients better if we know what we're doing. Um, and so just being able to step away from that, I think is kind of the next step um, in being able to get more profitable with the company and not just profitable, but become a better team, yeah. better at what we're doing. Um, because we're still, you know, we still have things we need to work on. You know, we're still, I'm not looking at my numbers at the end of the year and saying, hey, this is great. This is where we want to be. Yeah. You know, we get to the end of the year and, you know, last year, I think we might have did 5 to 10% net profit. That's still not where I'm comfortable with. You know, still, that's a pretty thin margin. That is very thin. That's a really thin margin. I usually tell people you never want to shoot less than 10. Like exactly. The, below that, it's just too razor thin. It's too thin. razor thin. And, and I had not... Actually, healthily, like 15, 20, net. Exactly. Net. Yep. Not and that's gross. what we aim for. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're pricing our jobs, you know, around that. Um, and, and then sometimes you go over hours and it dips down exactly. to 10. You know, yeah. yeah, that's just the ebb and flow. That's part of it. Yeah. But it's like, you know, okay, so we're always asking that question, well, what's, what's eating us out? Why are we ending up here? You know, we're working on synced up. We're getting our budget put in. Um, so what is it? Well, you know? I would say in my experience with helping hundreds of companies with their mm -hmm. budget, it's most, most often it's like, oh, yeah, we did have that over the overhead expense. Oh, yeah. yeah. We did spend that money over there, and it's not in your budget. Exactly. And if it's not, if that's happening, yeah. and it's not in your budget, then that's what happens. You're bidding jobs at twenty yep. percent, then you overrun hours on a couple, and you have some overhead costs that are not in your budget, and that's where it gets eaten right back out. Mm -hmm. to you're down to where you're razor thin. Yep. You know. Yep. And so to combat that, especially when you're young and just getting started, and maybe don't have good history or track record, or you might yeah. forget something, I recommend just putting a fudge factor into your overhead in your budget, mm -hmm. like. So maybe if your total overhead for your company is two hundred fifty thousand, or I don't know, yeah, um, throw in another twenty to forty thousand of just fudge slush fund mm -hmm. uh, to cover some of those unexpected things. And if you don't end up spending it, great, then it's just in your profit, right? You know. And the other thing with that too is making sure that you don't, you know, if you're building out your budget and you look at it and you think, oh. Now, yeah, there's no way I can sell it at that. Like you need to deal with that. that yeah, that's that's, that's a that's a mindset problem. That's yeah, a mindset that, problem. You, and the so numbers that, don't lie. No, they don't. No, and it, the thing is, like, you know, I could look at that and be like, well, maybe I'm just not setting our sales goal high enough. Maybe yeah. we could do. Maybe instead of eight hundred thousand this year, we could we could aim for nine hundred thousand. Yeah. But the problem is, if I am not being realistic with my sales goal, and we only hit eight hundred thousand for the year. I lost $100,000 worth of profit. income that was meant to recover overhead. That's right. That's so, right. So, you know, a lot of it, you know, it's not only do you need to make sure your overhead is all in there, just be straight up and honest with yourself. Yeah. And don't go down the road of like, oh, I can't sell this for that and, and bump your sales goal up. Because if you bump your sales goal out of, out of reason, you're not going to recover all the overhead you need. That's exactly right. Because it just dilutes down your overhead. Yeah. It, well, and well... It, the, the overhead recovery and sync up is based on the expenses, not the sales goal. But what can happen is if you're like, if you're yeah. spending X on overhead mm -hmm. and, and, and you think, well, based on my past track record, I think I can hit this in sales and it's, and you're not making the profit. Right. Um, bumping up your sales goal. It, what could be happening is you're spending too much on overhead. You're yeah. too heavy on overhead yeah. for your size. Sure. And if you want to be spending that kind of overhead, then you have to sell mm -hmm. a minimum of X, which could mean maybe you do more work or maybe you don't do more work and you just make a bigger margin on the jobs right. that you do sell, exactly. which comes back to dealing with the head trash. Right. Because like I've, I've had this fight, I shouldn't say I had this fight, I've watched this struggle in people, and I've had this struggle too myself, where like, oh, they'll never go for that. Right. No, no, yeah. And it's like, well, at the end of the day, like coming back to serving your own personal vision of family and time and all of that, like if you fall on your sword and self-sacrifice and knock off five grand of the price so that they go for it mm -hmm. and you feel like, oh, I can deal with this, I, I can sacrifice and I, I, it's, it's me that's taking the hit. Well, it's not just you. Right. It's your family. Yep. It's your team. And it's the future yeah. of your business. So yeah. you can't, you, you, you like, sometimes people just got to like bite the bullet and just... Tell the customer it's tw not twenty five; it's thirty eight thousand. Just, just, just yeah. do it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And and yeah. and you, what you're gonna find is, what in the world? They went for it. Right. They accepted it. Man, like, wow. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. 
And like, yeah. and slowly, like the proof, the truth, you know, and the proof will eliminate that head trash. But, but and then, then it comes to, well, maybe you're trying to sell to the wrong clientele. Exactly. You know, exactly. because like, yeah, there legitimately are people that aren't going to pay the 38 and mm -hmm. aren't going to want the 25. Mm -hmm. And it's like what I tell people is like, don't negotiate on your price, negotiate on the scope. Yeah. Meaning like if, if they legitimately have a $25,000 budget and what they want is coming in at 38, don't negotiate on that. Tell them like, okay, you got 25, sure, we'll hit that 25, but you're gonna have to make sacrifices on the size of the patio or whatever it is, swap out for a cheaper product and connect them meeting their budget right. to, oh, we gotta give something up. We gotta make something smaller, exactly. we gotta, you know. Yeah. And that's how you can kind of weed out those clients and those jobs that you lose out on. And that's something I've, I've been learning and still learning to this day, principles that has helped me switch mindsets quite a bit on that is just a, I don't even know where I heard it or who said it, um, but something along the lines of, uh, you're not obligated to fund somebody else's lifestyle. Exactly. And that's one of the things that was just an unlock moment for me. Yep. And I don't know, you know, what all played into it. I was the oldest sibling of a bunch, or yeah, the oldest child in a big family. So I had this sense of obligation to take care of the things that didn't get done. and. And whatever and so I kind of took that into business and you know now all of a sudden I'm feeling obligated to, to help this oh I you know they want this really badly I you know and I, I need to work I need to provide for my family I, yeah I can yeah I'll make this work for them you know, or you feel guilty like yeah. Yeah, I don't need to you know why do I need to make this much profit margin on this well there's a reason yeah but so just knowing that truth that like I'm not obligated to fund somebody else's lifestyle. If they want a paver patio to, to live on or a water feature to enjoy or you know a fireplace, that's their choice to have that and I will provide that. I'll do a great job at it. But my first responsibility is to provide for my team, to provide for my family, to have time to serve. And so what, you know, like you and I had talked earlier, what I was doing was is, is uh, sacrificing our team and my family in order to to help out this person with their with what they wanted for their lifestyle yeah. at their home yeah um and at the end of the day it, it doesn't really make sense yeah but that's where i was that's where we go yeah, i know exactly i know so that that was a big mindset shift for me was just realizing what what really is important you know, and I, it makes me think of like when you said you walked into that accountant and finally, hey, it really helped when I had someone to hold me accountable. Like this is like sometimes people look at having a coach as throwing away money. Mm. But like this is where like, and Jim Wirtz and Frank Bork and these guys have really helped a lot of even people in the synced up community. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know if you have a coach going on right now or not, but like um, I would really recommend getting a coach to help you think through some of those operational things, mm -hmm. through, through some of the head trash things. And it's gonna help you, like when you have a sudden burst of inspiration and a, yeah, I shouldn't be funding my client's lifestyles. Well, they're gonna help you like hold true to that. Right, exactly. You know? And the thousand dollars you might spend with a coach will come back to you tenfold. Right. You know, so yeah. it's it's money well spent. And I would say find someone that you jive with and, and make mm -hmm. it happen because, and your team will, see that and value that you're investing into not only yourself and your own mindset but the company and its its health and what you know future exactly so um, exactly yeah that accountability fact we're human like we keep falling back in our own ruts all the time yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i appreciate that and that yeah. is something that i i've been thinking about recently i think would be would be good for sure you know especially with my personality i you know like i said Oh, hey, there's another yeah, idea. Yeah. Well, let's go jump after that. I mean, yeah. water features could be that next idea. Yeah. But it needs to be more than that. Yeah. It needs to be something that we're going to plug into and learn and, and delve into and, and become craftsmen at it. Yeah. Um, and be able to support our team and our families. Um, and it's not just another new idea to try out. That gets pretty expensive. Yeah, ex yeah exactly. <laughs> R&D, right? Yep. Exactly. Well, man, this has been some good conversation. Um, where can people go find you and follow along and see your, your jobs and what you're doing? Sure. So we post, I want to say, periodically on social media. Uh, so we're on Facebook and Instagram. 
Um, Instagram's probably the easiest to find us uh, at Cable Bros Outdoors. Okay. That's uh, basically Cable Brothers, mm-hmm. but it's abbreviated B R O S mm-hmm. Outdoors. And uh, I just want to take this opportunity to say, you know, thank you for being part of the Synced Up crew and uh, putting your faith and trust in kind of a, yeah a, a fledgling new startup, you know, and and um, that's something I don't take lightly, and I uh, appreciate you know your persistence and pushing through and getting the implementation in and half the half the battles pushing through to the end and actually getting to the part where you can reap the reward of the right. discipline so absolutely and it's um, just part of the learning and i i've it's been an exciting journey with synced up and, yeah and i see you know the vision you have and, and your team and where you're headed with it and um excited to see what else comes yeah the next two three years are going to be awesome exactly yeah <laughs> Okay, well, hey, thanks again for yeah putting your faith and trust in us at Synced Up. I know every one of us at the team genuinely appreciates you guys, and uh, thanks for being a great host out here in Ohio. You're welcome. Anytime. Hey. And I'll see you on Monday in Chicago. Oh, boy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Message him on Instagram and make it happen. Tell him he has to go. He needs to go invest in himself to learn how to do water features because there's, like, nobody else out here. So, <laughs> All right, see awesome. you, man.